Yeah, uh, no, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, really excited to be here, really happy to be here. Um, so yeah, I'll talk about a couple of different results. Um, so uh, this is work that's been done over the past two to three years uh, with Tim Su at uh, Carnegie Mellon, Sinaf Mohanty, uh, who's graduating this year from uh, UC Berkeley, and then Pedro Paredes, who's a lecturer in the CS department here. Okay, um, so I know that uh, potentially it's been a while since there's been a talk about, uh, oh, well, first let me just give a, a, a general overview of what we're gonna do. Um, if you only remember the first minute of this talk, just that uh, lossless vertex expanders are hard to create deterministically, and they can't be uh, created by usual combinatorial methods. And then uh, we can relax this idea of lossless expansion to unique vertex expansion um, and unique neighbor expansion, and we can create deterministic examples there. Okay, so if to leave now, that's fine. Um, so just uh, a couple of slides about definitions, because um, I know not every talk is about spectral graph theory. Um, so we're going to be talking about graphs. Um, we'll always know by n the number of vertices, and we're just going to assume that our graphs are deregular. Just means that um, every vertex neighbors the other vertices. Um, so every graph, of course, uh, induces an adjacency matrix where rows and columns correspond to vertices. I put a one if there's an edge between two vertices. I put a zero if there's not. Um, you can think about this as the linear operator describing uh, the a walk on this on this graph. So this is symmetric. Um, so it has real eigenvalues and the top eigenvalues d, which corresponds to the all ones vector. Um, okay, just general background. Okay, so uh, so yeah, for the first part, we'll talk about lossless expanders. Um, so often when I think about a graph, I want to think about its connectivity. Right, and uh, we call this connectivity its expansion. Um, and there are many different notions of how I could uh, calculate, how I could quantify how connected a graph is. Um, so first of all, I could think about spectral expansion, uh, which says more or less, um, if I started an arbitrary vertex, how long does it take for a random walk starting at that vertex uh, to reach the uniform distribution? Um, and this is governed by the spectrum of this adjacency matrix. Um, once again, the connection to the, to the walk operator. Um, specifically, it's governed by uh, the size of the second largest eigenvalue. Okay, um, but I could also come up with more combinatorial ideas of expansion. Uh, so for example, I could think of edge expansion. Uh, this just means I take a subset of vertices, I compare the number of edges going out, of that subset versus the number of edges that stay within that subset. So here I have my blue edges coming out versus this one uh, red edge staying in. And similarly, I could talk about vertex expansion, which is just the same question, except uh, now I'm worried about vertices rather than edges, where I take some subset and I count the number of vertices uh, adjacent to that subset, uh, versus the number of vertices in that subset. Okay, so these are our three definitions. Um, so a natural question is, um, how good can my expansion be? And then what graphs have that very good expansion? Um, well, random graphs uh, end up being almost optimal in all three types of this expansion. So I'm talking about uh, regular graphs here. So you can think about a random graph as I just take all graphs on n vertices that are degree d, and I just randomly select one of them. You're allowing d to be also a parameter, right? Not fixed. No, yeah, not fixed. It could, d could be anything, yeah. Um, eventually, we'll have d be a constant, but for now, it's not a requirement. Uh, so, so yeah, so like I said, uh, these are random, like this randomly selected graph that you'll choose with high probability will be a near optimal expander. So in terms of spectral expanders, um, there's this, um, the allen vipana theorem, it tells us a limit on how good my spectral expansion can be. Basically my, my second largest eigenvalue always has to be at least two square root d minus one uh, minus the small factor. Um, so we call, 
graphs that um, satisfy this bound from Venusian graphs, um, ones that have optimal spectral expansion. And uh, Joel Friedman showed that uh, with high probability, uh, a graph sampled from this distribution, a random regular graph, um, almost satisfies this bound, right? There's a small correction factor here. Um, so we can call this uh, a near Ramanujan graph. It, and it's almost optimal spectral expansion. Okay, and for vertex and edge expansion, um, it's a more, once again, a more combinatorial argument um, where, okay, I claim that with high probability, the vertex expansion is, is at least D minus one minus some, some small factor. Um, and the idea is that, uh, well, roughly, if I just want to, if I have some, some small set S, right? And then I want to say that their S uh, hits many different vertices, then the distribution of the neighborhood of S is invariant if I resample um, all of these edges coming out of S. And the point is with high probability, um, it's going to hit many different vertices, an almost optimal number. Um, and the other thing that I just want to note is that this D minus one is actually, uh, is actually optimal, right? Because I can always come up with some adversarial example where, for example, if my set S is just all the neighbors of a given vertex, right? Then it's not going to expand to this vertex, but it will expand outward everywhere else. So it's, so really what we want is this uh, D minus one bound. Okay. Um, so we say that if it satisfies this D minus one minus some small factor, uh, then we say that vertex expansion is, is lossless. Um, and if you, if you just think about it uh, for a moment, you can see that a lossless vertex expander is a lossless edge expander. If I expand to all different vertices, then certainly I expand to all different edges. Okay. Um, so we know that random graphs are, are optimal, are near optimal. Um, so the next question is, can we come up with deterministic examples that also satisfy these bounds? Um, so we can do this uh, for spectral expansion. Um, so there's the um, lubosky phillips sarnak graph, um, then other constructions of Margulis, uh, Morgan CERN, uh, that give infinite families of Ramanujan graphs. Um, so ones that satisfy this optimal spectral expansion. Uh, and because of the relationship between uh, spectral expansion and edge expansion, uh, these, are all, these will also be very, very good edge expanders. Okay, so that's spectral and edge expansion. What about vertex expansion? Um, well, there's this very impressive result of Kapalo, Rheingold, Vada, and Vingerson, who showed that uh, an infinite family of one-sided uh, lossless expanders. So by one-sided, I mean, I have a bipartite graph, uh, the left and the right side. Uh, the left side is slightly, or it's bigger than the, than the right side, but nevertheless, small subsets on the, or you know, some small constant of all vertices on uh, the left-hand side, they expand losslessly to the right-hand side. Okay, uh, this is done through what's called the zigzag product. Um, and the point is that, so we know expansion from the left to the right, but there are no guarantees about uh, the right to the left. So what we're thinking about now is, can we create some kind of two-sided lossless expander? Okay. Any questions, by the way, about anything I've said so far? I know it's, okay. But yeah, definitely just let me know. Okay, so uh, like I said, spectral expansion implies edge expansion. So the question is, well, does it imply vertex expansion as well? Um, and the answer is yes, but not up to this lossless bound. Uh, so Kahale showed that um, any Ramanujan graph has a vertex expansion at least d over two, right? So we were looking for something that was like d, d minus one, and instead we're getting a d over two. Moreover, he showed an infinite family of almost Ramanujan graphs uh, where the vertex expansion is at most d over two. So once again, by almost Ramanujan, I mean 
uh, second eigenvalue two square root d minus one plus some little factor. Okay. So let's talk about the Kahale construction. Like how do I come up with these poorly vertex expanding Ramanujan graphs? Okay, so let's just start with a Ramanujan graph. We can start with the uh, lubowski phillips sarnock graph. So I'm going to uh, start from the central vertex and from each of its neighbors, I'm going to delete an edge, right? So uh, from the central vertex, it has here three neighbors. I'm going to delete an edge from each of its neighbors. Okay, and now I'm going to inject two more, two new vertices. One will neighbor the neighbors of the original vertex, and the other one will, it kind of just cleans everything up so it's still deregular, right? Um, so one neighbors the original vertices, and the other one will just neighbor uh, everything else that had an edge deleted. Okay, so, so morally, what are we doing here? We start out with one vertex, uh, which has some number of neighbors, and then we're creating another vertex and giving it the exact same adjacency that we had in the first vertex, right? So we're creating a gadget which automatically has poor expansion, right? Because these two vertices have expansion d over two. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, this destroys the vertex expansion, but the important thing is that it actually doesn't destroy the, the Ramanujan bound. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about why that happens. Um, but the thing that I, that I want to focus on for now is that um, we're actually creating, how are we doing this? We're creating a, a K2D subgraph, right? Um, and the thing is that um, by creating this, we're creating many cycles all on top of each other, uh, which is very unlikely to happen, happens with polynomially small probability. Uh, in a random regular graph. And in order to, to kind of express that this, is, this isn't just some, you know, some non-important thing, uh, for the three proofs of uh, Friedman's theorem that I know, uh, friedman bornov and Huang Yao, um, this, is, this is really a key quantity. Um, you know, this is called tangle freeness or, or bound in excess, but it's this idea that um, if I have cycles in my graph, then they're all spread apart. Okay, so, so, so what are we trying to say? Um, so I want to quantify what the, what the length of the shortest cycle is, uh, so I can think about the girth of the graph. So uh, the girth is just the length of the shortest cycle, so here the girth is just four. Um, the growth of a graph is always at most two uh, log d minus one n. Um, to see this, if I if I started, let's say that I have the highest growth possible. If I started a vertex in my graph, then um, if I uh, look at vertices of distance one, there are d of them. Distance two, there are d minus one times d. And then after that, every time I multiply by a factor of d minus one. Um, and the point is that. Uh, because I have n vertices, after log n steps, I'll have to hit every vertex in my graph. So um, really, we want a, a high growth graph. Uh, so we'll say a graph is high growth if, it, uh, if it's the same order as this more bound. OK, and uh, another like intuitive comparison here is that uh, girth guarantees expansion on a local scale, where a spectral expansion is uh, a statement about a random block on a global scale. Um, so on a local scale, um, if my graph looks tree-like, then I know there aren't too many intersections and it mixes uh, as quickly as possible. And then, like I said before, spectral expansion is really a statement about my, my global random block. Um, how, how quickly does it mix across the entire graph? Um, and moreover, we, we know that initially, before this perturbation, we're working with these uh, high girth graphs um, because these lubowski phillips sarnock graphs have girth uh, four thirds uh, log n. Okay, and the the other motivation for this is that Kahali actually shows that um, 
if I have uh, high girth, then for polynomially small sets, so for sets of size, uh, if I have girth C log n, uh, sets of size n to the C over four uh, expand losslessly. Okay, and to, to give an idea of, of why this is the case, right? Let's, let's just say I have some small set uh, S here. And let's say that it um, doesn't expand lo losslessly, so it, so it has some lossy expansion. Well, if it has lossy expansion, then um, there are many edges coming out of S that intersect at the same point, like up here and down here, right? So um, note that if I contract all of these edges, then I only reduce the girth by a factor of n minus two, right? Because I'm basically changing paths of length two to paths of length one. So if this uh, contracted graph has high degree, then if it's a small set, then I, I'm able to find some short cycle. I'll, sorry, I'll, I'll just have that as a claim. Um, so the point is, is that if originally the graph were high girth, then the average degree, once I do this contraction, must be low. Therefore, it must expand losses. OK. And then the, the other thing that I want to mention is that this combination of spectral expansion and high girth actually implies um, other uh, delocalization randomness properties of, of graphs, uh, specifically Anantaraman and Lamasson show that if I have both spectral expansion and high girth, that's enough to prove a, a weak form of eigenvector delocalization known as quantum ergodicity. Um, and in fact, uh, each of these by itself is not enough. I, I, I actually strongly need both. Um, so what we were hoping is that uh, if we include the, both these local and global uh, conditions, this doesn't allow us to create patterns of, uh, that we see in lossy or, uh, expansion. Okay. But I mean, from the, from the first slide, you could probably guess like this, this is not possible. Um, so what, what I showed uh, with Sanath Mohanty is that for infinitely many D, uh, there's an infinite family of D regular graphs uh, such that for every graph in the family, the graph is almost Ramanujan, it's high girth, and it has a poorly expanding set, um, a poorly expanding set of uh, polynomially small sets. Do they have four thirds? I, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, so for example, the, so what did we say before? So if I had girth uh, four thirds log n, then I would know that I would have to increase uh, the size of the set, right? So yeah, it would have to be like uh, n to the two thirds. Um, so yeah, I was actually thinking about this this morning. Um, yeah, you would have to come up with a different high girth construction, but yeah, we can talk about that. Too. Okay, so, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this original uh, argument of the Halle, and then we're going to alter it a little bit. Uh, so in, instead of injecting uh, two vertices, we'll, we'll use a larger gadget that preserves it. Okay, so our first attempt, or the first thing that we thought about, uh, was this construction of uh, Noga Allen, uh, Sershendu Ganguly, and uh, Nikhil Srivastava, where they were trying to create these uh, localized eigenvectors for high growth graphs. Um, so what did they do? They, they took uh, two trees, then... Uh, Sorry, you haven't explained how Kahali keeps the Ramanujan property. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, what about that? Uh, sure, yeah. So, yeah, we'll, yeah, I probably should have put that earlier, um, but we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, if it's still not answered, then um, we can talk more about it. Um, so the, okay, so the, the goal is, um, okay, so I, I want to create localized eigenvectors. So what am I going to do? Well, I have two trees. Um, I'm going to uh, 
match the leaves of the trees in some way that preserves growth. Uh, so, uh, for example, I can put them like this, and then, uh, you know, for this very small example, this is like the highest growth that I can get. Um, and the point is, I've created a gadget that um, has uh, lossy vertex expansion. It also has localized eigenvectors, which is why they did this, um, but also it preserves growth. So uh, this is nice, but the only problem is it doesn't preserve, preserve this uh, Ramanujan spectral gap. So, so actually in their, in their paper, they show that there exists some constant C uh, such that the second eigenvalue is bounded away from uh, two, square, uh, two plus C squared D minus one. So we, are, so we need a different construction. So what we're going to do is instead, we're going to implant a connectivity graph. Um, so every deregular graph induces a D2 bipartite graph where vertices are on one side and edges are on the other side. Uh, so each vertex is connected to D edges and then each edge is of course connected to two vertices. Um, moreover, uh, this the left-hand side of this connectivity graph, it has uh, lossy expansion. It has expansion D over two. <laughs> so what we're going to do is that we're going to implant the connectivity graph of a small high growth graph into our lubowski phillips sarnock graph. Uh, so what do I mean? Well, I start with uh, the neighborhood of some vertex. I delete that neighborhood. And then I replace that neighborhood with this connectivity graph. At every vertex? No, just, just that in one place. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, sorry. Iterate or you will keep? No, so all I do is just in, uh, in the same way that I'm going to uh, create a gadget that highlights uh, lossiness, right? Yeah. Locally. Yeah, locally. Um, so yeah, we'll talk briefly about like global constructions too. But um, for now, yeah, let's just think about this. <laughs> so um, I'm going to delete a neighborhood, implant the graph, and then just reattach it into my graph. Simple as that. So. The first claim is that this action preserves growth. And then the second one is that spectral gap is not changed. Um, so uh, claim one is not that bad. You just need to track different types of cycles, right? I said that my implanted graph was high girth. Um, my original graph was high girth. So if I just think about the different types of cycles, it's fine. So uh, for the second claim, I actually I say it's actually somewhat similar in but now we're just tracking different types of eigenvectors. Eigenvectors that are supported on uh, my gadget, eigenvectors that are supported in the rest of the graph, um, and uh, combinations thereof. Yeah. And yeah, Peter, in response to your question, this is a generalization of Kahali's argument, the second part. OK, so uh, the way that we're going to do this, first of all, is we need to consider um, Remember that, sorry, let me just go back. We're implanting this inside of a high growth graph. So locally, locally, uh, this implanted graph H will look like H with an infinite tree uh, extended from it. So the first thing that we'll do is actually show if it is actually H with an infinite tree extended that it has a spectral radius at most two square root D minus one. Okay, and then, so this will deal with eigenvectors localized on H, eigenvectors not localized on H. Uh, remember, we originally assumed Ramanujan is, um, so they'll have low spectral radius as well. Okay, so like I said, we want to uh, bound the spectral radius of something that looks like this. Uh, so we have our uh, original gadget, and then we extend it in a tree-like way um, beneath it. So we're going to do this uh, by bounding the spectral radius of the, um, of the non-backtracking operator. Um, so the non-backtracking operator uh, on a directed edge just sends that directed edge um, to all potential locations uh, respecting the direction of the edge. 
Um, and moreover, it's, it's actually sufficient uh, to bound the spectral radius of this non-backtracking operator if we want to bound the, um, that of the original adjacency matrix. Okay, so um, roughly, how is this done? Um, well, with a non-backtracking operator, it really just becomes a, a walk counting argument. Um, so we can think about it as um, there are two regimes. So I, I start with some uh, directed edge, and I'm going to look at um, the, the non-backtracking operator raises to some power. So you can think about the edge going uh, in the direction of the arrow. Then the non-backtracking operator uh, adjoint uh, to some power, which is like the non-backtracking, the edge going backwards, and then uh, ending up where I started. So uh, the question is, how many walks are there like this? Well, I can divide it into uh, two different regimes. Uh, so the first regime is, let's say that I'm in this tree-like component, right, at beneath H. Well, if, I, um, if I'm in this tree-like component, if I'm going up the graph, I only have one choice. And if I'm going down the graph, then I have D minus one choices. So the geometric average of that is square D minus one. Great. Okay, now for some fixed amount of time, I can stay in my uh, subset H, but in fact, uh, that's, that's the exact same property. As I go, if, if I'm staying in H, if I go up, then I only have one choice. And if I go down, I have D minus one choices. Because remember, this is the non-backtracking operator. Um, so overall, the, the geometric average is uh, square root of D minus one, which is exactly the bound that we wanted. So when you sew this thing in, you mm -hmm. started off with a N vertices and degree D. Yes. You ended up with how many vertices? Oh, so you end up with uh, approximately the same number of vertices. But more or less. I uh, well. In other words, why why can't you then construct Ramanujan and Gross iteratively this way? Um, like uh, Bilu and linear. Yeah, well, of course you know that very well. Yeah. So, so you, uh, this looks too local. So are you increasing the number of vertices? No. Uh, so you're so you're going to be slightly decreasing the number of vertices. Slightly decreasing. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I guess the okay, other okay, that makes sense. I thought, wow, he's just going to die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you're making less. Uh, you, you're sewing that in. Yeah, because it's slightly it's a slightly right. denser graph. Um, and I guess the other thing to note is that um, we are uh, making the uh, spectral expansion slightly worse by a factor of about one over log n, right? So the so you need to make n very large. Because, yeah. And so you would need the original guy to be good in order to exactly. Yeah. Okay, I got it. And I guess the other, the other point that I want to make is that. Um, if you're talking about iterating this process, that, that's something else that you would have to consider, right? It's that if you did it a super constant number of times, so how you're changing the expansion. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so, okay, so that's great. So yeah, but you're saying you're losing a little bit. So you have to take n large, and then how did you arrange it? It's strictly Ramanujan, and not almost Ramanujan. Oh yeah, this is almost from Sorry. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's a little rude. <laughs> All right, now I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. These like you know, surgical like combinatorial arguments. It's very hard to yeah maintain like straight uh, strictly <laughs> Um As you kind of saw in the alone uh, yeah, coming that's, of these stuff. That's sort of remarkable thing of uh, linear and uh, yeah. The, that they discovered that you could just double and find that. Yeah, strictly Ramanujan, definitely. Um, and yeah, and I mean, and the only reason why you can even get this this approximate Ramanujan is is because um, of the shape of the corresponding eigenvector. Um, okay, now <laughs> so so the so the claim is that um, okay, so I know that the spectral radius of this gadget is uh, two square root d minus one. So let's say that after I do this uh, surgery, I have some eigenvalue of modulus greater than two square root d minus one. Then the point is, is that I can't have 
too much of a contribution from this uh, graph of low spectral radius. Um, another way to say this is that um, as I leave this graph H, I must have exponentially increasing mass on the eigenvector. Uh, so once again, uh, on such an eigenvector, there can't be significant mass on H. And uh, by assumption, all the other eigenvectors uh, had low spectral radius. Yep, yes, best uh, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, like I said, epsilon here is um, one over one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, however, I, I will say, so since we, uh, since we posted it, there is this, uh, yeah, very strong result, which shows that um, Morgan Stern normal region graphs um, have sets of size n to the one half that have lossy vertex expansion, right? Um, so this is strictly Ramanujan, um, despite being high girth uh, Cayley graphs. Um, moreover, uh, the authors of this paper conjecture um, that the way that they identify this lossy set uh, can properly determine whether a Cayley graph has good or bad vertex expansion. Um, so specifically, they conjecture that uh, that LPS graphs are good vertex expansions. Yeah, good for them. <laughs> so, so yeah. Okay, yeah. So I think that's the end of uh, the first part of my talk. Um, are there any questions about any other questions about that? Otherwise, I'll move on to the other result. Okay. Oh yeah. Can you say something more about how the the girth is kept high if this uh, gadget is much much smaller? Um, oh sure. Um, so it's not much smaller. It will be it will be about size like n to the one third, right? So the gadget has size n to the one third. So we, if I can come up with a graph which has which is once again any graph of high girth, right? Then it will just be log n to the one third, right? Um, in terms of the yeah the the girth there. Um, so in fact, this like polynomial. We can do it with a polynomial size set, um, which is fine. I, I will actually say um, something that I that I realized only recently, it, which is that um, because of this like uh, nice polynomial girth stuff, um, if you did our construction in the original uh, Alan Ganguly uh, Sarvastava paper, then you get the same result except with Ramanujanness, right? So you would get high girth. Uh, Ramanujan, almost Ramanujan graphs uh, with uh, lossy vertex expansion and localized eigenvectors, which is kind of cool. So, one more question. Yes. Um, uh, how exactly are you attaching it? Like, my understanding was that the number of uh, edges of this uh, graph is about like d or d squared or something. And then, so, so oh, I yeah. So, um, so, yeah. So, if I have. Uh, something like this, I'm just going to take any vertex in my graph. Uh, like we said, uh, girth is going to be uh, 4 thirds uh, log n, right? So for example, I could take a ball of radius uh, 2 thirds log n. Uh, okay. That would be a tree, right? Yeah. And then, you know, and then, yeah, I, I take my, you know, my, my funky looking uh, connectivity graph. Um, yeah, I guess this is yeah, that already answered. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, questions now? Okay. Um, so let's talk about um, the. Uh, so yeah, this is hard. So let's talk about a, a relaxation of this. Okay. So. Um, so instead of looking for uh, a lossless vertex expander, we can think about a unique neighbor expander. Um, so a unique neighbor of a set S is a vertex that has exactly one uh, edge to S, right? So um, a unique neighbor expander is just uh, some graph that has a constant number or a constant fraction of its uh, neighbors are, are unique neighbors. Um, so yeah, basically I'm just, I ignore everything that, that combines uh, to which S has multiple edges and I only focus on uh, 
vertices to its S as one edge. Okay, and uh, just to say that like, although um, this is much weaker, there are still a lot of applications to unique neighbor expansion specifically in both math and computer science. Um, and um, I also find it interesting because um, it can be used sometimes as a proxy for beating this D over two bound, right? Because the only way we can beat the D over two bound from Kahale is if um, we always have unique neighbor expansion. Um, and yeah, and actually I will say that, uh, for example, in this, in this uh, Combert Kaufman construction, they actually show that uh, sets of the size are, are not unique neighbor expanders. I remember they're using fields F to the Q. The field has to be at least not prime. Yeah. So, and that's the source of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they call it like the fixed orbit. Yeah, the fixed orbit method, yeah. Um, P to the power one as well. Yeah. Q is P to a big power. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'll just say uh, once again, this is a this is a study question. Um, so Alan and Gopalo uh, showed that there are infinite families of three, four, and six regular unique neighbor expanders, um, such that uh, you know small sets have uh, many unique neighbors, and they also showed one-sided unique neighbor expanders for d less than twenty-five. Becker showed that. Uh, there are unique neighbor expanders, which are also Cayley graphs. Um, and then in a preprint that was also uh, posted this year, Asherov and uh, Irit Denur show that um, there are one-sided unique neighbor expanders uh, where the sizes of the two sides are have any ratio. Okay, um, so uh, we'll talk about in the rest. Go back. Yeah. Get lost result. Any arbitrary. Yeah, so in a similar way to um, the zigzag product, uh, what they showed is that even if L is basically the ratio of L to R can be anything, and then they can still construct a one sided. Yeah, it's uh, explicit. Yeah. You can never expand yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, what we showed is that. Um, Basically, if, if for constant D, if D is sufficiently large, we don't find D. Uh, there's an infinite family of D regular unique neighbor expanders. Um, and also, um, once again, because of some application computer science, uh, we uh, generalize this to biregular graphs as well. Okay, so uh, let's talk about this result. Uh, but first, let's talk about um, the result of Alan and Capalba. Um, so uh, once again, we're going to start with uh, lubowski phillips uh, graph. And we know that, uh, once again, because these are optimal spectral expanders, uh, they have good edge expansion, right? So what we want to do is that we want to translate edge expansion into vertex expansion. Um, so the really, uh, the really interesting smart idea was Let's just change our edges into vertices, right? Uh, yeah, and then hopefully our edge expansion will translate into some kind of vertex expansion. Okay, so just to be clear, we're taking the, the line graph. So for the line graph, I take some graph, I create an, a vertex corresponding to each edge, and then I connect uh, two, ver two vertices in my line graph if there's a vertex uh, between the two edges. Right. Okay, so I end up with something that looks like the bottom. Okay, um, so this is great, but the, the one thing that we need to consider, right, is that when I do this, um, every vertex in my original graph will create a clique in my new graph, right? Uh, so we're going to sparsify this line graph uh, with a gadget. So uh, what they did is that they consider the, the line product, uh, which is on the graph of edges. Uh, and we just replace every clique that we have with some other fixed graph H. 
Um, so our goal is to leverage, uh, so let's say that H has many unique neighbors, then our hope is to leverage the unique neighbors of H into unique neighbors of uh, G times H. Okay, uh, so for example, sorry, yeah, I guess this is kind of a mess, I'm sorry, but uh, what I'm doing is I take this graph, which is um, four regular, so I can take the line product and then replace each one of these cliques uh, with a copy of this four cycle. Um, so for example, at the bottom here, uh, we have the four cycle that corresponds to this vertex in the top right. Now, the spectrum of the line graph and of the graph is a simple relation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but in fact, the only, uh, you, we'll see that the only way that we're going to reason about the spectrum of the original graph is through the expander mixing lemma. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so I, I just, just to find this P, P of H is just going to count the number of unique neighbors, right? It will just say, um, what's the minimum ratio of unique neighbors to the size of the set? Um, and uh, what they showed is that uh, if most edges of my induced subgraph uh, neighbor low degree vertices, so if I take any, sorry, if I take any induced subgraph, uh, if uh, most of the edges on that induced subgraph neighbor low degree vertices, then I can, um, the uh, number of unique neighbors of my small graph H translate into unique neighbors of my line product. Okay, and uh, if you're familiar with the uh, with the zigzag product uh, and this construction of lossless expanders, uh, there, this is a similar idea where I'm trying to create a graph product where a very very large graph inherits uh, optimal expansion properties of some constant size graph. Yeah, so so we're going to do something similar here. Okay. Uh, now, why do I get this hereditary expansion? Um, well, I can, uh, if I have some set of vertices in uh, G times H, uh, I can split them according to uh, the vertices in my original graph that, get, that they correspond to. So I, ideally I would have something like, oh, I can just count the number of unique neighbors in my line product, uh, according to the number of unique neighbors in uh, in my original graph H. Uh, so that's not exactly true. Uh, and the point is that uh, I'll have some overlap when uh, two vertices share an edge. But this last term just corresponds to uh, internal edges of my graph, of my original graph G, uh, of vertices touched by T, but the point is, is that, like I said, if I have an induced subgraph, then there will be few internal edges. Uh, and, and they'll be bordering uh, principally low degree vertices. So the, the rough idea is that this last term is going to be small. OK. Uh, so yeah, I'll just keep on going. Um, so I. Uh, so once again, we have this idea that spectral expansion gives us edge expansion. So we'll just use an LPS graph. Uh, and moreover, uh, the, uh, the bound that I get is that um, for an LPS graph, basically through the expander mixing lemma, if I look at small subsets uh, of vertices on my, on my graph, then it will have many vertices of degree square root g minus one. Okay, uh, and then what do we need for H? Uh, so we just need a small graph that has many unique neighbors. So Alar and Capaldo uh, came up with explicit graphs of different degrees that satisfy the given conditions that you need. Uh, and they created this for, for D equals three, four, and six. Uh, and uh, what we did is that we just said, okay, 
can I create some kind of random regular graph construction that still satisfies all of these nice expansion properties? Uh, and uh, we were able to do this. If I, if I take a, a GD square root D, obviously rounded uh, graph. Uh, so once again, this random regular graph model where uh, the degree is the square root of the number of vertices. Is this also random? No, there's is explicit, yeah. Um, so because the size of the graph is constant, uh, we just use an exhaustive search to find it. Uh, once again, this is what's done in the, in the zigzag project um, where I have some constant size uh, random regular graph um, and it gives this lossless expansion uh, to the zigzag product. Okay, uh, so generally the, the way that we do this is that um, because I have this nice ratio between the number of vertices and the degree, I can approximate my graph with an error random graph, uh, specifically a graph with independent edges. Um, and once we, we get to independence, you know, our, our life becomes much easier. Uh, and then we show that um, because of the independence of these edges, uh, there are many unique neighbors for subsets up to size square root D. Uh, and moreover, we prove a, a slight generalization uh, using this uh, random regular graph to error differential comparison to uh, biregular graphs as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, I have like 12-ish minutes, so I'm gonna talk uh, a little bit, okay, yeah, so I can talk about this. So um, what are the limitations of this technique, right? Um, so this creates unique neighbor expansion, expanders, that's great, uh, but we, we can't surpass the D over two bound using this construction, right? Well, why is this? Well, if I take any copy of, um, of my small graph H, right, and the vertices that correspond to that copy, then, all of those vertices will expand into each other. So that means that um, each one of these vertices will only have one edge coming out, right? So we'll only have one unique neighbor. So actually, once again, strictly this D over two bound uh, shows up. Okay, uh, so uh, just as a recap of, of what we did. Um, so we talked about how uh, we can find an infinite family of deregular, almost Ramanujan and high growth graphs with lossy vertex expansion. Um, like, I, like I said earlier, in, in fact, these also have uh, localized eigenvectors. Um, and the other thing is uh, we can actually, if we relax this to unique neighbor expansion, uh, we can find a family of uh, unique neighbor expanders of degree D. Um, but once again, they, they strictly cannot be uh, lossless expanders. Okay, so um, just a couple of questions that we had about this. Um, so, and something we were, were toying with is that, so we have this uh, line graph, uh, which gives us an automatic restriction. Can we come up with some smarter combinatorial graph product? Uh, maybe some other uh, construction uh, that lets us pass the uh, DO2 bound, or at least doesn't explicitly stop us uh, straight away. Uh, and so, moreover, can we uh, further elucidate the relationship between uh, vertex expansion and eigenvector structure, um, which is really quite fundamental uh, to this first result? Um, so, I'll just say a, a simple example of the relationship between uh, eigenvector structure and vertex expansion is uh, let's say that I have a set which is as localized as possible. So it only has uh, non-zero entries and some small set S, okay? Then um, every vertex outside of it has value zero in the eigenvector. So that means the only way it can have value zero is if uh, at least two edges of S hit that vertex in order to cancel out the value in the eigenvector. Um, so what am I saying? What I'm saying is that such a, such a set S actually has to expand in a lossy way. Um, so, uh, so very localized eigenvector structure uh, can only be caused by these very lossy graphs. Um, and this is kind of a theme in, in this line of work. 
Um, so is there any way that uh, the reverse implication uh, could help us? Um, so namely, if, if all eigenvectors are strongly delocalized, can I guarantee some kind of vertex expansion? Um, and once again, for random regular graphs, we know uh, these very strong eigenvector delocalization results. Um, so yeah, I know this is, this is more abstract, but there seems to be a strong connection here um, that, that should be further explored. Yeah, and that's all I want to say. Thank you. More questions? What's the application of unique, unique neighbor expansion? Oh, um, so like I said, there are, there are a bunch of different applications. I know that, um, okay. So like, I know that for example, um, like Iridunur was interested in this and then um, Tim So, one of my co-authors was interested in this because of its application to LDPC codes. Um, exactly what that was, I'm, I'm not sure, but yeah. I mean, I know the lossless expansion was used by Spielman and Subsa. Yeah. In the, in the but yeah, I think, yeah, potentially for relaxation, once again, all you need is this unique neighbor expansion. You get something if you look at some form of relaxation of the unique neighbor thing, so in which you don't exist. So I guess if you just want anyone who understands constant number of edges, that one is the same. And but if you have some kind of scale. So sorry, what it, what exactly would that be? So just asking whether you know of some results or something that people looked at. That uh, I mean, this should be probably a weaker or even weaker version, but maybe enough for some of the applications or something. But sorry, what's the version? It's like you have a const only a constant number of edges. So to... That I suspect yeah. is very similar to just having a single one. But yeah. You could have some kind of multiple, like more control on it essentially. So, so there is a version in which you have multiple kind of, you have different levels. So vertices have growing numbers of, kind of yeah. how many edges they go back, but they all send the same number in the sense that yeah, anyway, I was just wondering whether there is something that looked at uh, variations of exactly how many edges you sent back rather than just a single one. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I, yeah, I would imagine potentially, yeah, the applications, once again, uh, if there were applications in computer science, then yeah. I would say that, um, you know, if you just ask for, right, you automatically get D over two. Uh, losses expansion from uh, from these Ramanujan graphs, uh, just from the spectral bound, and uh, potentially even uh, you know these Morgenstern graphs, which we know are not unique neighbor expanders, um, could satisfy the property that you're talking about. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether anyone's actually shown that. But it, but it's an interesting question. Yeah. Thank you.